Hey guys, it's Jen. Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another video. So today I thought I would take you along with me as I travel to Texas for work. It's my first time on a plane in what, 18 months? So it's a little surreal. It's 4.30 in the morning. I need to leave right now. I feel simultaneously very alive and dead at the same time because I got about three and a half hours of sleep. <laughs> last night but I got my coffee I have an energy drink in the car and we're gonna hit the road or we're gonna be late to the airport okay so it's been a long time since I've been up this early to catch a flight probably the last time actually I think the last time I flew was when we went to Cancun in December of 2019 which we actually ended up timing kind of right because that was like <laughs> right before everything happened with COVID but anyway so yes if you are new to my channel hi and welcome my name is Jen I am full-time working mom I have a husband and two kids and I work in healthcare consulting and so I get to travel this week to Texas for work. I am fully vaccinated as is the rest of my team and most people who work in healthcare so no worries there, we'll be masking properly but that would be fun to take you guys along with us because I did do a Chicago vlog a couple of weeks ago which everyone seemed to enjoy but I thought this would be fun since it's my first time flying in a while so my flight this morning is at 6 which means that I would like to be to the airport at 5. I already checked in on my app. I have TSA pre-check so we should be able to breeze through security but here we go. Here we go. So I live in a small town in the Midwest and we don't have any major airports around here. I would say the closest is Chicago, which is a little over three hours away. So the closest airport to me is Quad Cities Airport, which is in Moline, Illinois, which is about 30 minutes from my house. And then we also have an airport in Cedar Rapids, which is about an hour away. And sometimes I do fly out of there depending on what is going on, like with connecting flights and everything. It's really hard to get a direct flight anywhere <laughs> from here. So for where I'm going this week, I'll have to connect at O'Hare. Sometimes if like I'm going to the West Coast, I normally have to connect in Denver. Yeah, so that's just how it goes. And especially here, you get very little choice about when you fly out. So of course, I would prefer not to get up at 3.30 in the morning and catch a flight, but I do not have a choice. <laughs> So here we are. But anyway, I did make myself a cup of coffee. So I have that. The most challenging thing about this trip so far has been that I have been challenged to pack everything in just a carry-on, which I have honestly never done before for this long of a trip. I have always checked a bag, so this should be pretty interesting. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. I also switched all of my items in my purse over to this smaller purse, so we'll see how that goes. I'm trying. I'm normally the one with like the huge suitcase and the huge purse, but we're trying, we're trying to do a little bit better, so, all right. through security that was like so much slicker than I've ever done it before so I'm gonna rearrange some things inside my bag I think we board in about 10 minutes and I did get some crap coffee sing the back, mama. Sing the back. All right, so I'm at O'Hare and I just like inhaled a bagel and I worked for a little bit and I'm gonna get on my flight now to Texas and I think it's around three or four hours, I'm not sure of the length. I think it's about three. Big backyard, the big black dog, the hole to put your feet in. Sing the back, mama, sing the back. Hey guys, so let me update you. Made it to Texas, I'm here in my hotel room. I actually just got up from a little cat nap because getting up at three, 
30 or whatever time I got up this morning is no freaking joke. But as you saw, I had a Built Bar with me on the plane and thank goodness because I was starving. And thank you to Built Bar for sponsoring this travel vlog. I brought four with me this week. So the one that I ate on the plane was the raspberry cheesecake. You guys will have to look on their site and see if they still have that flavor. If they do, snatch it up really quick because it is freaking awesome. But I also brought a cookies and cream, which I ordered a separate box of these in addition to the ones <laughs> that they sent me along with the raspberry cheesecake one so I would definitely recommend this one and then I also brought a mint brownie and then a chocolate raspberry as well I like all of these you guys always ask me what my favorite flavor is I feel like it's hard to choose just one I really like the cookies and cream and then I also like the raspberry cheesecake and the chocolate raspberry but if you guys want to try them out I have a discount code for you a lot of you have reached out to me saying that you've tried them and you love them it's Jen Chapin 10 for 10% 10 off and I'll leave the link in the description box below but the macros are really good on these they have a ton of different flavors if you haven't tried them before I would recommend getting like the mixed box then you can kind of try them all and see which ones you like since I'm trying to watch my sugar these come in super handy because they have lower added sugar and they have a good bit of protein too and what I like about them is that I'm not someone who enjoys super super sweet food so to me they are just sweet enough without being overpoweringly sweet and the protein protein really fills me up so if I'm like a little bit peckish in the afternoon and I just want something a little bit sweet I have one of these or like I'm traveling this week on the plane perfect so definitely check them out I love that they have been supporting my channel because I love supporting them because they have really great products okay so let me catch you up on what happened so I made it to Texas and I was waiting for one of my colleagues to also get in on a different flight we were sharing a rental car together and so I had about an hour before before she got in and I was a little bit hungry and so I just decided I would eat lunch well as you guys know airport food is somewhat questionable and I've never been to this particular airport before in Texas and so I didn't quite know what to get so I was kind of just like walking down the terminal and there was like this you know Mexican style place that had like tacos and salads and stuff and I thought you know I'm gonna make a good choice and I haven't had any vegetables today I'm gonna get a taco salad well I should have gotten the tacos <laughs> because I got this like chicken taco salad and it was like all right but but then like some of the lettuce was like a little bit soggy and questionable and the chips and salsa were okay overall it was just like basically a waste of $12 don't you hate when that happens and then I stopped and got an iced latte at a different place and I said put an extra shot in it and it just came out like milk with a little bit of coffee in it and so overall that was a big fail so I ended up just getting a big bottle of water and when I got to the hotel here I was starving so I actually got a like a little like microwavable frozen pizza that they had in the lobby I know and I ate that with a coke zero <laughs> because I'm like I just need something in my stomach and right now it's about 5 15 I just got up from like a 30 minute nap because I'm so stinking tired but I ordered what did I order uber eats so I wanted to like DoorDash a Starbucks because I if you guys like are particular about your coffee you know that like sometimes when you get coffee from places that's like the, the thing about Starbucks is that you can get it anywhere and it's like consistent right it's like okay I know if I order an ice latte with an extra shot this is what it should taste like but anyway I guess they don't have a Starbucks that door dashes here so I have a Panera order coming I went ahead and ordered a I don't know like a Caesar salad because I think what the team is gonna do tonight is we're just gonna order pizza and like eat in the lobby of the hotel and like I said I feel like I need vegetables so I ordered a Caesar salad I am staying at a residence in and if you guys know anything about residence in by Marriott they have like a full like little kitchen Jeanette in here so I actually have a fridge so I'll stick my salad in there and then I ordered two iced coffees so I could put one in the fridge and I think that's it so anyway I'm just waiting for that to come I'm gonna let well let me show you what I brought to wear this week and then I'll share with you what I brought for toiletries too I managed to get everything in a carry-on and my rolling laptop bag and I did not have to check a bag like who is she I don't even know all right, so here's the little kitchenette I was telling you guys about. I sort of feel like this huge room is just like wasted on me when it's just one person. But anyway, here is the carry-on that I brought. So this is actually in the set that I got from Costco that I shared with you guys not too long ago. So I was able to fit everything in here by rolling it up very tightly. So the only thing I have left in here now is just some pajama pants and pajama shorts that I brought and a couple t-shirts to sleep in and some socks and my jeans. 
And then over here we have a closet. So I went ahead and hung my clothes up just to make sure that they would kind of have time to like hang the wrinkles out. I did bring a light jacket because even though I'm in Texas and it's supposed to be 90s this week, it is supposed to rain and I didn't have like a small travel umbrella. So I just decided to bring a jacket with a hood. I brought for casual wear, I brought a sublime shirt and just a plain black t-shirt. And then the three outfits I brought for work in addition to some black slacks are just this leopard print shirt with a black cardigan and then I also brought this kind of mustardy sweater along with this top from Lane Bryant. I actually haven't worn it yet. It's brand new. It is kind of like a short sleeve sweater. I thought that would be nice for this week. And then I also brought this kind of animal print light. This is called the Harper shirt from Torrid. I can try to link all this below. And then I also brought a dress. I won't wear this to work. I'll just wear it in the evening if we go out to dinner. But this is a Carly dress from Lula Row, and I bought it so long ago. I don't even know if you can get it anymore. But I like it because it's nice and cool and then I also brought a tank top to wear at night if I want to this is my new favorite tank top from Torrid love it it's like high neck and then just a couple pairs of black slacks and then my shoes so I brought my trusty pill container you guys know I got this idea from Julie of Julie's plans love it I can separate out all my pills for all the time I'm here so I brought that my hair straightener I've just been putting my earrings in this little like ziploc -y bag thing I did bring an extra pair of glasses and then for shampoo, I got some stuff from Ulta, which I showed you guys in a video. So I just brought some Kenra dry shampoo, some hairspray, my travel deodorant. I did bring some contacts in case I want to wear contacts one day. My travel size wet brush, which I shared with you guys. Love that thing. Then I just fit all of my makeup in this little Clinique bag. It fit perfectly. And then all of my kind of like skincare stuff in there. So it worked out fine. I was very nervous that I was going to forget something. Thing, and I actually did forget a pair of I was gonna bring a pair of Capri leggings But like knowing what I know now I don't know if I would have had room when I tell you I've never packed everything in one carry-on before to go on a trip I have never packed everything in one carry-on to go on a trip So anyway, my DoorDash is gonna be here my uber eats I don't even know you guys I'm super tired. It's gonna be here in a little bit So I'm gonna get some coffee in my system Hopefully eat dinner tonight and then I'm not sure what I'm gonna work on probably I'll work on work stuff tonight I'll catch up on some emails, different things like that. All right, so I ended up getting a Caesar salad. So I guess if we order pizza tonight, then I'm gonna have this in addition because I just need some veggies in me. And I also got a fruit cup on the side and then they gave me a baguette too. I'm not sure why I didn't order one, but whatever. And then this is one of the sprouted bagel thins or whatever. I don't think I've ever had this before from Panera. So I'm gonna save that for breakfast tomorrow. I believe I actually have a toaster in here. So that's cool. And then I also have this garden vegetable cream cheese that I ordered with that. So I feel much better now that I have breakfast for the morning and a salad. All right, let's do the Panera coffee taste test. You guys, I don't know. I, okay, so the town I used to work in had a Panera and I always like getting food from Panera, but I never like getting coffee from them because I just feel like they never do it right. <laughs> okay, so this is, I don't know. So I got one just plain cafe latte and then I got one of some like almond milk vanilla latte. So this is the almond milk vanilla latte. This is actually pretty good. I don't really like mine sweet, but I don't, this does, one doesn't taste super sweet. So, oh, it's at the bottom. There wasn't an option that I could find to customize it. So whatever, it's fine. I'll drink it. And this one is the cafe latte. See, this seems very light to me. Like I would have liked an extra shot in that, but that is not good. I'm glad I got two. See, what is that? So if you look at this, I mean, it just looks like they took milk, put it on ice, and then just went bloop with some coffee. Whatever, it's fine. It's fine, I have a coffee and that's all that matters, okay. Okay, you guys, so I have exciting news. I got to go to HEB for the first time ever. What? I was like, we went for dinner and one of my coworkers was like, I'm gonna go to the grocery store and we're gonna get stuff for lunch and snacks for the rest of the week. So I'm like, all right, let's go. So I thought I would share a little HEB grocery haul with you guys, I'm so excited. So I did get some Faye yogurt for breakfast this week. I tried to get enough food for three days of lunches and then snacks to keep in my hotel room also. So I figured tomorrow for lunch, I can take this sushi. This is a tropical combo. It's a spicy coconut shrimp roll. 
Temptation roll and a San Antonio roll. I got a Cobb salad with bacon. So it's got pasta and romaine lettuce, dressing, croutons, cheese, bacon, etc. And then I thought I could take this for a snack. One day it's just apples, grapes, and cheese. And then I also got a buffalo chicken club wrap. I thought that looked good. And then one of these bistro boxes that just has fruit and nuts and cheese in it. And then I also got one of these boxes that has ham and cheese and crackers looks like wheat thins in there some pepper jack cheese because you can never have enough cheese I always feel like meat and cheese is like a good thing to snack on because it just like fills you up and it's not like the bunch of carby stuff I did get some raisinets just one little box in case I wanted something sweet and then for a snack I just got some of this southwest black bean dip it looks really good along with some Fritos I needed a travel size of hand sanitizer I forgot to bring one with me so I got that and then I got a coke zero for the morning and and some bottled water. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and take a shower. It is about 9 p.m. right now, and I think I need to get up around 5.30 or 6. Hey guys, good morning. So I feel so much better after a good night's sleep, but it's now about 6.50 in the morning, and we're gonna get ready to leave, but I just thought I would share my outfit with you, so just a second. Okay, so I decided to go with this top from Tori today. I really like these Harper blouses. If you've never tried them before, they come in a bunch of different patterns and they're really cool if you live in like cool temperature wise <laughs> if you live in an area where it's hot or even like in the Midwest during summer I like them because they're nice and loose but they're dressy so I am going to take a jacket with me because I think maybe it's still raining and then I have these earrings on from I think it's they're from Premier Designs but they are not in business anymore so I cannot link them or anything like that and then I really love these slacks they are from cut from the cloth I also really like Torrid's dress slacks too but anyway and then I just have my dance goes on so I'm gonna get my stuff together and get out the door and I'll catch up with you guys later hey guys good evening how are you so it's almost midnight now it's much later than when I last talked to you so I had a long day at work and then once we got done with work today decided to go get barbecue tonight so of course in Texas there is fantastic barbecue and I think tomorrow we're gonna get Mexican because it's Cinco de Mayo and that is only appropriate so so we'll see about that. But basically that's all I did tonight was eat dinner. I got back to the hotel. There's not a Starbucks around here, although there is one in the same town. So I did get Uber Eats and have them bring me two coffees. One I saved in my fridge for tomorrow morning. So I'll have that. So anyway, I talked to Connor tonight on the phone and talked to Adam tonight on the phone and texted Kira and everyone seems to be doing okay. So I logged on to my computer tonight and did some more work that I needed to get done before tomorrow morning. Today was actually the release date for my cookbook, so thank you so much for all of your support. I posted on Instagram this morning, and you guys have been tagging me in your stories when you get the cookbook, so that's awesome. If you don't follow me on Instagram, it's just Jen Chapin. I always have a link in my description box, but I really do appreciate you guys supporting me on that. I want to make a dedicated cooking video with some of the recipes. I just haven't had time to do it yet. I've kind of taken a break from posting videos this week because I've been been a little bit burnt out plus I've been traveling <laughs> so it's kind of like you know I'm not in my normal routine but I do have a video going live tomorrow that's a weekend prep video so that'll be good and a couple more later this week so yeah I think I just have to find like a workload and a cadence that is going to be good for me I'm not sure what that will be yet but we'll see so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and go to bed I need to get up at 7 tomorrow and we're leaving around 8 30 and then actually I have a couple of calls tomorrow morning that I need to dial into early so one just before eight I'm actually being interviewed on what is called TRE, which is Talk Radio Europe. I've never heard of it before, but they reached out to my publisher and asked if I would willing to do like a 10 minute segment. So if I have that information, I can post it down below. And then my local newspaper also wanted to call me and ask a couple questions for a story that they're gonna run. So super exciting stuff. I'm gonna go to bed. Good night. Hey guys, good morning. So it's about a little bit before eight right now, and I'm just waiting on this Zoom call for my interview 
with the talk radio Europe people. So hopefully everything goes off without a hitch. And then I have another call with my local newspaper for an interview about the cookbook and then I'm going to get to work today. So I did go down and get some coffee. So I've got that. I actually ordered some coffee and breakfast from Starbucks last night. So I'll probably eat that on the way to work this morning. But yeah, have a busy day ahead of me. So I will catch up with you guys later. So this cookbook basically gives you 85 basic ingredients to keep on hand in order to create all of these recipes. So that includes canned vegetables, canned beans, frozen fish, you know, meat you can keep in the freezer, grains, anything you can think of to create a diverse list of recipes from your pantry. That's one of the principles of this cookbook is that, you know, if you come home from work and you've had a super busy day, you're not sure what to make for dinner, you can just crack open this cookbook and anyone can find something in there that they can make with just the ingredients in their house. Blueprint dishes are essentially recipes that you can feel free to substitute whatever you have on hand. So they'll list possible ingredients and then you can just use whatever you have in your pantry. You could use whatever veggies you have in your freezer, whatever meat you have in your freezer, whatever veggies you have laying around in your crisper drawer. And the idea of that is just to show that there is a lot of flexibility in cooking and you know we can make the most of what we have on hand without going out and buying additional ingredients. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> oh, that was fun. I had to like basically talk through how to make the focaccia in my cookbook. So yeah, that was kind of cool that I was contacted by them because I feel like it's just more publicity for the book, especially in a European market. So anyway. I'll try to link their site <laughs> down below. Obviously my cookbook is linked down below. So anyway, now I'm gonna take this other call and get to work. Hey guys, good morning. So travel vlog fail. <laughs> No, I'm just kidding. But I think when I left you, it was like Wednesday and I did not really film the rest of the time there. I was exhausted from like working all day and then going out to dinner with my team at night. So I didn't really have that much time to vlog, but I thought it would be fun just to wrap the travel vlog up here with some questions and answers. I asked for Q and A ideas, questions on my Instagram last week. And I thought I would take some of like the work and career related questions and answer them at the end of this video so hopefully this can be a substantive video for you guys but first of all I wanted to share so this is the rolling sort of like laptop briefcase that I took with me and I have some feedback on it so I can link this down below I ordered it on Amazon I think it's around $80 on sale it does hold two laptops which is what I wanted because when I travel I obviously have to take my work laptop but then I normally take my personal laptop as well so I can work on like YouTube related stuff in the evenings in the hotel so I need something that holds two laptops. So the pros of that are that it has multi-directional wheels. So I can kind of just hold it with my suitcase and wheel it, you know, flat along the airport floor. So that was good. A con I would say is that depending on the size of plane you're on, this is billed as an under seat bag. But what I found out is that on the smaller planes or even on some of the larger planes, depending on what seat you're on in the plane, it does not fit under the seat in front of you, which can be problematic if you also have a carry-on. So if I have my carry-on and that and then a small purse, like one time when I was boarding, they made me put my small purse in there and that briefcase would still not fit under the seat in front of me. So I ended up taking up two spots in the overhead bins with my carry-on and that, which isn't really fair <laughs> to other people on the plane. So I'm not quite sure about this yet. I do like the quality of it. I feel like for a laptop bag, it's unnecessarily like large and bulky. And I feel like the size of it is very deceiving. Like like it looks like you can fit a lot more in there than you can. So I'm not sure if I'm going to maybe try and go with a backpack that can carry two laptops. I ordered an over the shoulder laptop bag that can carry two laptops from Amazon and it should be here today. I wanna try that one out. That one was only around $30, so we'll see. My main concern is that I really just want something that can fit under the seat in front of me because that's like, <laughs> that's like the limitation I have. So anyway, feedback on that. Regarding just having a carry-on, it was super nice. I did not have to worry about, you know, waiting for my luggage or anything like that. So that was fantastic. I would totally do that again. I feel like I did a good job of like consolidating my clothing and making sure that I had, you know, enough like dressy pieces and, you know, for work and then also enough, you know, casual pieces for when we went out to eat at night. Okay. So now let's do some Q and A. So the first question is, have you ever visited Maryland? I live in Western Maryland, very different from other parts of Maryland. No, actually I have not. 
not. So the East Coast is actually somewhere that I have never been. I have been to so many states in the US. I haven't been to Alaska, I haven't been to Hawaii. I've pretty much been to every state, north, south, and west of Iowa. And I've been to Florida, I've been to most states in the south. I've been to like Indiana, Ohio, Michigan, kind of all those around here. But like as for the East Coast, like Pennsylvania, you know, New York, Maryland, Maine, DC, Virginia, I have not been out there. So that's definitely on my list. What was the name of the Chicago bagel shop? So I posted a video where I went to Chicago a couple weeks ago and there was a bagel shop that I visited and it was called Corey's NYC Bagel Deli. I can link it down below. They had the most delicious pretzel salt bagels, yum. Okay, next question. Do you plan on retiring in Iowa? I don't know. Adam and I always talk about that. I sort of would like to move somewhere else after the kids graduate, but we'll see. For now, we're gonna live here until the kids are in college and maybe while they're in college I don't know I would like to move to somewhere like the Pacific Northwest or maybe somewhere that is like a larger metropolitan area like I wouldn't mind you know having like a nice apartment in Chicago I think that would be super fun Adam would probably not go for that because he is not like the big city type of person but we'll see I don't know I don't know the answer to that question yet okay next question is how do you travel alone without being afraid I guess this has never really come up with me like I guess I have always really felt safe traveling domestically by myself I've done it a lot I've never traveled internationally by myself before but I wouldn't be opposed to it I think that traveling by yourself is one of the most empowering things you can do as a person or as a woman and I would highly encourage it I think that it is super freeing and just very makes you feel very independent doing it by yourself so if you've never done that I would definitely recommend it I remember my grandma asking me like a couple years ago about when I was like traveling somewhere for work and she's like oh honey you're gonna go by yourself I'm like yeah no my husband's gonna chaperone me on all my work trips like what it's just funny or that older way of thinking, you know? No, I'm not afraid. I actually really enjoy it. I enjoy having the alone time. Um, I'm sure Adam enjoys when I'm out of the house and he gets alone time for a week. So yeah, I have no issues with it. Okay, next question. Do your coworkers ask about your YouTube page? Do they know about it? So at my previous job, yes, most of my coworkers knew about my YouTube page and some of them even watched all of my videos, which was fine. I am the same person in real life as I am on YouTube, so I have have nothing to hide or be <laughs> embarrassed about. My current coworkers, some of them know about it. I would say that there are probably not a lot that watch my YouTube videos, but I don't really care if they do or not. Like I said, I'm the same person in real life as I am at work, so it it's totally fine to me. Although a lot of my newer coworkers have pre-ordered and <laughs> ordered my cookbook. So I'm very grateful for that because I did share that at work because I thought it was kind of a cool accomplishment. So yes, they have been supportive of my cookbook. Next question is, do you feel like the more kids women have, the more it holds them back? So I feel like this is a loaded question and I feel like for most women who are like middle class or lower, I would say probably yes, it holds them back just because it costs a lot of money and you need a lot of support and resources to find childcare if you're going to continue to work. I barely made it through. Adam and I with two incomes, you know, paying for childcare in a relatively cheap state. Iowa is pretty cheap for childcare. I felt like it was rough me getting through and I can tell you that my resume for like the five years that I had little kids, I didn't do anything extra because I didn't have enough energy. I was like staying up all night with babies and going to work. It was like the most exhausting thing ever. So personally, yes, I do feel that way and that's one of the reasons why I didn't want more children because I knew that in my life I wanted to focus on my career and it's not that you can have, you can't have both. I mean, I've seen women who excel in their careers and have, you know, four, five, six kids, but a lot of those women are high earners too. So if you look at like doctors, lawyers, you know, women earning probably six figures or more, it's probably a lot easier for them to have more children and still excel in their career versus, you know, a woman who is working around the minimum wage having multiple children. So I do think that there is a lot of economic inequality in regards to that. And I wish that our government would support mothers more because I think that obviously women are essential to 
the workforce. And unfortunately, the more children that a woman has, I feel like a lot of the domestic tasks still get dumped on the woman. I'm talking in a heterosexual relationship just because of how the patriarchy is ingrained into our society. So yes, that would be my feedback on that. Could you do a video on how you are going to retire at 55? Love your channel. No, probably not because I am just saving every penny that I can. So that's what I'm doing. I don't know. I'm, you know, I've always put the maximum amount that I could put into my retirement. I've always had like a 401k, an employer matching retirement, whatever the case is. So that's part of it. Obviously you will have social security too. Another thing to keep in mind is if you're going to retire at 55, how are you going to bridge the gap with your health insurance from the time that you're 55 until the time that you're eligible for Medicare, which is 65, because that's an important consideration as well. And so if you have an employer that will allow you to still purchase health insurance if you retire at 55 then that is obviously a good thing otherwise you have to save up money and purchase it on your own so i'm not a financial advisor and i would never claim to be so i probably will not make a video on that i'm just saving all my money and <laughs> putting as much money as i can into my 401k okay next question is the best and worst career advice you have ever received so I, I wouldn't necessarily say that this was like advice, but I feel like it was one of those things that I had to overcome, especially in healthcare. And maybe this is in all fields. I don't know because I've never really worked in another field, but I feel like when I was in my twenties, a lot of people told me that I was too young to be doing the job that I was doing. And I don't really understand the rationale behind that. Obviously I understand that there are certain things that you, you know, gain with experience in any role but part of the issue I think with leadership and government is that there aren't enough young people in it and then we have people who are 60 and over making all of our decisions which is okay but you need that you need that generational diversity and so I have always been told like you know you're too why are you doing this job you're too young to do this job I mean the reality is is that I became a nurse when I was like 22 years old so by the time I was 30 I had you know if you count my experience during nursing school school working as a CNA and LPN. I've had almost 10 years of experience in healthcare. So it's just kind of interesting how people will dissuade you of doing, you know, from doing things just because they're like judging you in a certain way. And I think that that comes from people thinking that young people are immature, which isn't obviously always the case. I think some of the best career advice that I have ever received is that I had a mentor once and this was more just by observing what she did, but she took meticulous notes and she wrote everything down. And that is something that I still take with me to this day, which helps me be much more productive and much more, it helps me have more like street cred with people. Like for example, if I'm working on a project like long-term and I take really good notes and I can refer back to those, it helps me like earn the trust of those people I'm working with because I know what's going on. So I would say that another thing too is that your resume needs to be like impeccable because you if you're applying for a job you are in a pool with you don't know how many other people and before that that person doesn't know who you are that's the only thing they have is this piece of paper that's representing you and so if you have grammatical errors spelling errors you know date errors if you have errors on your resume that makes a terrible impression and even when I have been you know involved in interviews and hiring before in different positions I totally judge that you know when I look at someone's resume and there's grammatical and spelling errors. They haven't talked about what they've accomplished. They haven't been like data driven in their resume approach. And like, this is how I improved this to this because you can say whatever you want, but if you don't have the data or the proof to back it up, then it doesn't really matter. So those are the two things I would say, write everything down. Always keep sticky notes with you. Always keep a notebook with you because if you think you're going to remember it, you won't. And then second of all, your resume really needs to be like boom, spot on, or you're going to get thrown out you know, before you even get to interview for the job. 
Okay, so we're talking about maternity leave on my Instagram and this person says, not a question, just FYI, paid maternity in Poland is one year. Yes, we have a lot of work to do in the United States for maternity leave. There is no federally mandated or paid maternity leave in this country. In my position, I would always have to save up vacation, save up money because I could get FMLA, which means that I could have 12 to 16 weeks off without losing my job, but I wasn't getting paid. And so some people are in the economic position to be able to afford that and some people aren't. So it's a huge disparity. Applying for jobs after college, any advice? I really don't have a lot of advice on this except the resume piece that I just talked about. Healthcare, I feel, is like really different in that you can always find a job. You know, what I tell my kids and what I always told myself is when I was going to college, I would never major in something that I didn't know what I was going to do with it because my primary goal of going to college was to get a career career that I would be satisfied and that would make me money. And so just to get, you know, a bachelor's degree and whatever you think you enjoy without a career plan is probably not the best a plan maybe I don't know I mean I'm not here to judge anyone <laughs> for their choices everyone has to do what's best for them I would say you know get involved in as many like volunteering and extracurricular activities as you can because those are all things that you can use on your resume as experience personally I worked while I was in college and so I already had that healthcare experience going into my first job so I feel like I'm not really equipped to answer this question because I think it depends a lot on the field that you're going into how did you and Adam meet what's your favorite flavor of built bars Adam and I met actually through some mutual friends we actually went to high school at different schools but they were sort of kind of towns next to each other and so I had actually dated previously to dating Adam one of his friends and so we kind of have like some mutual friend groups and then we ended up meeting at a party that he had at his parents house when his parents were in Vegas whoops <laughs> And then we started dating after that. So when we started dating, I was actually 17. It was actually three months before I turned 18. So yes, I've been with Adam over 20 years now. And yeah, we've been through lots of ups and downs together, but here we are still standing. <laughs> My favorite flavor of Built Bars, oh, I don't know. I feel like, so one of the newer flavors they have is the raspberry cheesecake. And that one is so freaking delicious. I don't know if it's still available because some of the special flavors go in and out of stock. So if you see that one, definitely snatch it up. The mint one is really good. It reminds me of like a chocolate mint brownie. I also really like the cookies and cream. I mean, I like all of them, but those are three that I can think of off the top of my head. All right, so that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Don't forget to check out Built Bar, speaking of Built Bar, and thanks again to them for sponsoring this video. I'm excited to be working with them again throughout the summer. So I'll have a link and a coupon code in the description box below if you guys have never tried them before. Definitely give them a try. I love them because they are high protein low sugar. They fill me up when I need a sweet treat and a snack. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I apologize for not completing my vlogging, but next trip I go on, I will try to do better. So thank you guys again, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.